and welcome to the SPNN Forum. I'm Martin Ludden, Executive Director of the St. Paul Neighborhood Network, and we're here today with Terry Austin and Tommy McNeil. Terry is the Founder and Executive Director of Positive Image, and Tommy is the Board Chair. Gentlemen, welcome to the Forum. Well, thank you for having us. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah, glad to have you. So tell us a little bit about Positive Image. What is, what is this organization about? Well, our mission is to strengthen families, help rebuild communities, and to serve our community. And we've been doing um, service in the Twin Cities area for over 15 years now. Oh, wow. And we put together community events uh, throughout the year to bring fathers and at-risk youths and families together. Uh, we start the year off every year with our father-daughter dance that we have in February, moved into June in the summer months. We have a Father's Day celebration. In the summer, we have a back-to-school celebration. Mm -hmm. And then, at the end of the year, we have a mother and son gala that we do to recognize some of the boys that are doing outstanding work in the community as well as in the classroom. Cool. So is your focus really on kind of fathers? Yeah, fathers and families. Okay. Uh, we, we, we really try to focus in on the fathers, but then again, we try to touch the youth as well. Wherever We just try to meet the youth where they are yeah. and bring them along with us. There's a lot of fatherless kids in our community, so we try to... Um, attract the father and then uh, use them as mentors for those youth in our community that, that may need help. Yeah. Uh, so where, what kind of, what brought this about? You said you've been doing this for 15 years. Uh -huh. Kind of what was the genesis of Positive Image? Well, to be totally transparent, um, I went to a divorce years ago, over 15 years ago, and, and when that situation happened and I had to co-parent my daughter, mm -hmm. I'm not originally from Minneapolis, so I had to find some extended family. Uh, I ran to Tommy McNeil and some other guys at the gym, and I knew I would always have my daughter on Father's Day yeah. weekend. And that's how it all started. It started off by just having a picnic in the park. Tommy McNeil was one of the first to help coordinate that in St. Louis Park at the time. Mm -hmm. And we ended up having over 50 people to show up. Oh, wow. And I said, you know what, Tommy, I think we got something. Would you guys like to do this again next year? And now 13, 14 years later, we're still doing it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's been great to see our kids grow up. It's been great to see the dads stay engaged. So it's, it's, it's been a wonderful deal. Yeah. And then for me personally, I've been able to have some extended family here yeah. as well. So that's the reason. Cool. And so Tommy, has that, that brought you, you know, a chance meeting at the gym? Yeah. Brought you to this organization? Yeah, well, I mean, I think it was a little bit more than meeting at the gym. Uh, that, that brought a sense of team. Yeah and camaraderie amongst the individuals that was there, and we realized that we all had kids around the same age. Right. Terry and I, fortunate enough, had two daughters around the same age range, so we connected just yeah. in that alone, sharing best practices and talking about fatherhood because we were both fairly new at it. <laughs> so, you know, when that, when that was established, I think we kind of built that bond from there. Yeah. So you guys were, you guys were girl dads. Absolutely. Before it was a thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so we kind of, you know, one thing about when you have daughters, it it brings out that emotional side in you that, that you really, as boys, you, we really didn't really show. So we had to learn from one another how to be more emotionally connected to our, you yeah. know, to our daughters. So whatever worked for him, if things were working for him, I would share, <laughs> then, you know, we would always share stories. Yeah. And so uh, we've done a pretty good job with that. And, and then, you know, other guys have always asked us, how did you guys do it, what worked, what didn't work? So we were able to share some testimonies mm -hmm. with other fathers that, that may be having daughters at this particular time. And we want to make sure that they can avoid some of the pitfalls that maybe we did or, or yeah. the other dads may have had. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's, you know, it takes a village, right, to yeah. raise a kid. And mm -hmm. I feel like that, that doesn't happen as much anymore for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Like the neighborhoods don't work the way they used to in that way. So to be able to create that village in this organization seems like a really, just an amazing thing to have. Yeah, and one of the things that I noticed from a lot of nonprofits is that they started off by doing the workshops first mm -hmm. and or either the programming first. Right. We wanted to try to take a different um, lane as far as doing that. We wanted to bring the fathers together to have more of, you know, building trust, you know, building a community with one another, right. building a, or either just providing a space where we can eat together, share stories, have fun, mm -hmm. and then provide the workshops based upon the need. Right. And so that's been our approach, has been working very well. 
and then we've been able to kind of keep fathers in, involved with us for eight to ten years almost and so it's, it's, it's been really wonderful to kind of watch yeah. the involvement of of you know fathers and, and then to see them serve in their community as well. Yeah. Well and when you start with fellowship that way yeah then you get to be responsive yep. and that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you get a chance to see what it looks like. Right. Because <laughs> if you grew up without a father you don't really know what it looks like yeah. to be a dad. Yeah. And so when you begin to see other fathers are are playing out fatherhood, mm -hmm. then you have a model to kind of look at. Tell me, is that what you find? Yeah, that's absolutely. I mean, Tara and I, you know, are opposite uh, in that fashion. I was a single parent. Uh, well, at least I grew up in a single parent household. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I wanted to avoid being a single parent, so I wanted to figure out ways that I can continue to stay engaged uh, with my daughter, um, continue to keep a happy marriage, keep that relationship going, yeah. and build really some trust with my kids as they evolve through childhood to adolescence and down to adults. Yeah. So um, I thought that was really important because it wasn't modeled in my household, and I wanted to make sure I was an example of that. Yeah. How? Um you mentioned you had daughters the same age. How old are your, is it just the daughter each, or how many kids do you have? How old are they? Mine is 22. Okay. I have an older daughter that's, that's uh, 22. Her name is Alyssa. And then I have Taryn, which is 14. Okay. So they spread out a little bit, yeah. but I have one that's that's almost an adult, and then <laughs> I have one that's a teenager as well. Yeah. yeah. So. And what about you, Taryn? Hey, man, me, I'm, I'm with two daughters, and it's a blended family. Okay. So I've actually been raising my 30-year-old since she was eight. Okay. And now I have a 30 and a 14-year-old. Oh, wow. And a grandson. Wow. So wow. I just want to let you know that, yes, I am a grandfather. <laughs> I know this great. You don't show it. Yeah, exactly. I try to keep it youthful. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that actually brings up, that's, that leads perfectly into my next question. Mm -hmm. Are you, you've been doing this long enough, maybe, do you have multi-generational um, kind of units going through your programming now? And that's a great question. You know, I think with the father-daughter has allowed us to engage with our grandfathers, so mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's more generational. Like Tommy, yeah. you have younger grandfathers now, and right. they're able to bring their, their daughters, their granddaughters to this event, and their daughter. Yeah. So it can be a family unit. So now you have the the, the grandfather can bring his daughter and his grandchild as yeah. well. And so it's all generational. And then we have two there's a lot of fathers that may have missed that opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of fathers that are co-parenting, yep. and that's a space for them to reconnect yeah. uh, with their kids. There's a lot of fathers that may be out of town, uh, that mm -hmm. may travel quite a bit, and that allows them a space to kind of still fill that void and go to something very nice that they can create memories that will last for a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, and if, and if I can add to that, yeah. I think one of the things that we've now evolved to is now that we're, you know, above 25 years old, <laughs> we start to now take care of our parents. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we see is, is that, you know, where a, a dance like this, which was originated and geared towards, you know, fathers bringing their, their adolescent uh, child, you actually have the, the kids actually bringing their parents mm. as a part of some kind of date night and bonding because, yeah. you know, time is of the essence and yeah. there, there's not a whole lot of time that we can spend uh, with our parents. And so we see a lot of that happening now as well. Yeah, well, that, that's the sandwich generation. Yeah. yeah, you're taking care of kids, you're taking care of your okay. parents, and like to also provide a space for that. Yeah. Right. Um, that's fantastic. So you mentioned the dance. That's mm -hmm. one of your kind of big signature yeah. events. Tell, tell me about that. Well, well, the dance is, it takes place every year mm -hmm. in February. Uh, we try to keep it around Valentine's Day and sometimes the fall week before or either a week after. And so at the dance, we have a dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a speaker. This year, we're going to have the, the uh, Minnesota Attorney General, Keith Ellison. Okay. We're very excited about cool. that as well. And then um, we give out some awards as well. So we try to recognize great fathers in the community mm -hmm. that's doing great work, not only in their, uh, within their family, but extending that uh, to other fatherless kids in the community as well. Yeah. So we give out some awards. We also recognize some of the daughters uh, uh, that are doing well academically in school. Mm -hmm. So we try to create a space where we can give some recognition f uh, to the dads, give some recognition to the daughters that are there as well, and any community leaders in the community that are doing great work as well. So, yeah. And then we have a covenant reading. One of the things I'm very always excited about, we have the dads stand up. Uh -huh. and read a covenant to their daughter oh, wow. uh, to say that I love you, I embrace you, I'm going to be here for you as well. So we have a seven point deal that, um, that we read off and then we give our daughters a flower and a rose and then we have to dance. Yeah. And so um, it's a great event, it lasts for over three hours or so. so uh, 
it's always a signature event for us throughout the year. And I think this year it's February 23rd? Yeah, it's Sunday, February 23rd at the Earl Brown Center. Starts at 4, goes until 8. Okay. And so uh, we always have a great time. And we have yeah. over 700 attendees usually every year. And so um, I always tell people to mark your calendar during that year because yeah. it's always a great time. Yeah. If you're just joining us, we're here on the SPNN Forum with Tommy McNeil and Terry Austin from Positive Image. If you want more information about Positive Image, you can go to positiveimage.net or find them on Facebook. And they have a father-daughter dance coming up February 23rd at the Earl Brown Heritage Center. So you have the father-daughter dance. Um, the, the covenant, that sounds like an incredibly powerful ceremony mm -hmm. you know, thing to include. Where did that come from? Well, one of the things that just by me doing some study work, I was a Bush fellow in, in uh, 2016, so I had to do some in-depth work about mm -hmm. fatherhood. And one of the things that I found uh, with fathers that are engaged with their daughter, that they began to really engage emotionally with themselves to, mm -hmm. uh, to really bond with their daughter. And, and with the daughters, they feel a lot more stability yeah. um, when their father's engaged with them as well. The, the overall being as far as self-esteem, self-image, all that stuff improves when the dad is involved. Yeah. And so it was just, just right for us to do a covenant in front of our daughters. And I wanted the image to show not just one dad reading, but, but I wanted to show how all the fathers are reading yeah. the, to their daughters together. So we have a model to kind of share with dads. And yeah. then too, it was for the daughters to hold the father accountable. Absolutely. Um, so now our daughters hold us accountable <laughs> to everything that we said that we was going to do. Yep. It's just one other layer that to keep fathers engaged throughout the year and to keep dads accountable to yeah. loving their, their daughters the way they should. So. Right. And have you found, you know, have you found an impact on that father-daughter relationship from this you know, from the dance and from the program more broadly? Yeah, uh, for me, it was something that I committed to uh, signing up for Positive Image at the beginning. And one of the things that it was important to me is be able to keep that uh, that relationship going. And what yeah. I, it, it was the communication piece that became more of something that I've taken upon a life of its <coughs> own, where originally I just thought it was just being there, being right. present, being there, but it's really about communication when it comes to daughters. Yeah. Like you can't just get away with just saying, hey, I'm gonna get this done. They wanna sit back and they wanna have a conversation about it, they wanna understand mm -hmm. it, they wanna digest it, and they want us to be accountable, as Terry was saying. So yeah. I think it's, uh, that was the most important part of being a part of the dance. Yeah. Oh, that's, I, yeah, this I, makes me want to be there. Yeah. Um, so, and what else, so the father-daughter dance is obviously a really big deal. What else do you have going on throughout the year? Well, in between the, the, uh, the uh, community events that we have, mm -hmm. our next event is in June. So in between uh, February and June, we'll have some workshops, some financial workshops. We'll also have some college planning workshops for the dads as well. We do all that, the, the uh, sign up will be at the event, yep. and then we'll have the workshops leading up to the, the uh, Father's Day weekend. Cool. For our Father's Day weekend celebration, we'll probably be around June 20th. It's mm -hmm. the third Saturday in June. Uh, we'll be at Central Park. We take over the park. We, we kind of cook all day. Uh, <laughs> and then there's a golf um, um, a spot there as well, the, the, the uh, Brooklyn Park Executive Nine Hole, okay. where we have a golf outing early nice. in the morning. And then after the uh, golf outing is over, everyone walks over to the park. Yep. And then we can eat and, and just gather and talk, play games. We also have the uh, police department, fire department involved as well. Cool. Um, and, and so everyone is invited. So yeah. we, we turn away no one. So it's just a, a, a community event where we ask everyone to come out, bring their families. We have plenty of food, hot dogs, burgers, chips, and drinks, and everything else. <laughs> and so it's just a good time for us to really come together as family and, yeah. and community um, to reset, to have fun with your families, right. and just to have a good time. And then after June, the end of August, we have our back to school celebration. We, mm -hmm. We're going into year, what, 10, I think yep. this year, where we have another barbecue mm -hmm. where we ask the parents to bring school supplies okay. for all those parents within the community that may need help uh, or fathers that may need mm -hmm. assistance with school supplies, backpacks, things of that nature. And we asked them to bring that. I think last year we raised over 150 backpacks oh, wow. uh, for those uh, parents in need. And then at the end of the year, in October, uh, we have a mother and son gala um, where now the moms and sons can kind of come together because uh, we didn't want to leave the moms out. Yeah. They was very adamant <laughs> about having something 
for them. They came to me and Tommy, what, five years ago and said, listen, you guys are having way too much fun doing a father-daughter <laughs> dance. We need to have something for our sons. Yeah. And so um, we started off by doing a mother-son. It was, it was actually great for us because we had a chance to bring our mom. So it was, yeah. it was great. So I don't know if, if you want to elaborate on what that experience was. Well, the experience in itself, it, you know, the mothers still think it's about them, but it's really <laughs> about the boys, right? And so we... Because they're going to be dads. Yeah, they're going to be dads yes, someday, yeah, exactly. right? We want to make sure that they understand how to treat a woman, mm -hmm. you know, how to be respectful. They typically get give roses to their mothers at the end of the yeah. night. Nice. So it's a great experience, but to Terry's point, I think the thing that we got most out of it is, while our mothers are still alive uh, and still active, we yeah. was able to celebrate them and let them know, you know what we're trying to do uh, not only for ourselves, but what we're trying to do as far as in building community. And that's something mm -hmm. that you know I can live with you know, as she gets a little bit older. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering, you know, you both dads of daughters. I was kind of wondering where you fit into this, the mother-son thing, but to be able right. to bring your mom, absolutely, especially to something that you've kind of created and brought about, has yeah. got to be an amazing experience. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think the first year we did it, it was absolutely amazing. I think we had 400 people the, the first year. We was able to celebrate our mothers, and, and, and my mom comes in from Indiana every year to, uh, to, uh, to this event. And I, and I think one of the things that it creates we're you know, we're all about creating family. Yeah. Wherever that may mean to you know a parent, whether they got one child, boy or a girl, we want to celebrate good parenting. Mm -hmm. We want to show our kids that we 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 care about them as well. And so um, it's an overall great event for moms because a lot of moms are you know single mothers and they're raising the boys. Mm -hmm. and, and so we want to make sure to celebrate them and to also celebrate those boys that are doing good academically as well. I think this year we, we did at least 10 boys yeah. that are doing great academically in yeah. school because a lot of boys don't get the attention for being smart. Right. And so we want to uh, celebrate them for being smart, but not only being smart in, in the classroom, but also having good character as well. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. Has there, like, has anything as you've kind of gone down this road, and Tommy, I'm looking at you because, you know, maybe a little a half step back from kind of, making everything happen, like, has anything really surprised you? Um, either something you've seen in the community or something you've seen in your own home as this has developed? Yeah, I mean, for me, and, and Terry probably can agree, I get people coming to me all the time, either through phone call, inboxes, and or if I personally see them out uh, on the streets telling us how impactful a particular event that they've been a part of have meant to them. Um, it's really impactful to see on Facebook or through social mm -hmm. media, especially you mentioned the hashtag girl dad have came yeah. out, right? To see the background of the father-daughter dance, you know, in the back of a lot of those fo uh, uh, yeah. photographs that yep. they sent out and put on display says a lot about the, you know, what we've created in terms of just the bond between the father and the daughter. So it's that and that level of recognition that's not always verbalized, yeah. Yeah. but we see through the images that we put out there. Right. Yep. That's, I, yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> what a cool reinforcement of, right. like, we're doing it right. Yeah. One of the things, too, I want to add is that it's so hard to quantify the, the, the impact that you're making. Right. But one of the ways that we try to do that is at every event that we have, we ask for a 24 hours of service. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very simple process. We ask them for a pledge to sign their name that, they'll, that they will commit to giving back 24 hours of their time and effort or talent mm -hmm. in their community in which they live. And so um, we've getting a lot of dads to, to say, you know what, I'm gonna give four hours to my church, four hours to my school, just four hours helping a community yeah. member. And so it kind of gets that whole momentum as, as far as just sharing their talents within their community, getting them out. Mm -hmm. And then it's just, a, it's just another way to just to kind of model uh, positive parenting, I think so. Yeah. Well, it's two hours a month, right? Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. So, it's manageable. Yeah, absolutely, right. absolutely. Yeah. And so I think fathers can appreciate. A lot of dads. What's funny is because a lot of dads want to do something. Yeah. A lot of you know they just haven't been asked to do right. it. Right. <laughs> and so you know they'd rather sit back and wait for their wife or or either girlfriend to do it or or so. But once you ask a dad to do something, specifically if they have a daughter, they're more than willing to to give 110% at doing it because yeah. they want to prove it to their daughter. And then also, dads are very competitive, so they want to make sure that they do <laughs> yeah. it the right way. So, Do you have a competition with your 24 hours? Like, is there, are there awards <laughs> for more? Maybe something we got to think about going <laughs> into 2021. Know, right? Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we try to to compete. We're just trying to keep up and make sure that we do the right thing. And yeah. so we just try to 
keep each other accountable. So <laughs> I think that's more than anything that we'll, what we try to do. Yeah. And do you fund this mostly through private donations or out of pocket? Is this like a community effort? How does that work? A great question. Um, a lot of things is out of pocket. A lot of things is really donation driven, mm -hmm. a sponsorship driven. Um, and, and then every once in a while we may get a grant or so to kind of yeah. help with some of the workshops and then with some of the events as well. But a lot of times we ask for um, support from community members, people that come to the event mm -hmm. to, to, to to lend their hand, lend their talent to yeah. help put these things together. So it's been an overall effort. Uh, we've been having some very good people uh, to help support us. Uh, a lot of local businesses support us as well. Yeah. I believe in if we are doing, a lot of people do business with a lot of different businesses. And if you do business with businesses, they should support your community. And so yeah. we ask them for su their support and they've been very fortunate. Uh, we've been very fortunate to, to be able to last this long with the community support we're doing. Yeah. Consistency has been key for us. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, when it's all said down, there's a lot of organizations, um, you know, one that we established is at a grassroots level, uh -huh. right? It's not a formal organization that you were here traditionally across the country, but what one of the things we're attempting to do just with bringing some brand awareness with, you know, organizations like yours, right? Yeah. Um, it's just making sure that folks know that we exist and that we are right. here making an impact. Yeah. And so with that being said, we're always asking for uh, any type of contributions that they can make to the organization, mm -hmm. may it be in kind or monetary. Yeah, that's fantastic. So you've got the father-daughter dance, mm -hmm. Father's Day cookout, yep. back to school, yep. mother-son, correct, and workshops in between. The workshops yes. in between. <laughs> and then I think this, you know, one of the things we've been able to do with the workshops is that since we have an audience that we have 700 people attend the father-daughter, it's very easy to, you know, for fathers to see what resources that they need at the event. We can plug them right into the workshops that's needed and then just kind of keep the planning going throughout the year. And then the uh, free food always helps. And so, <laughs> free food guarantees yeah, attendance. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, that always helps to entice people to keep coming back yeah. and, and, and to stay involved as well. So that's been helpful. Yeah, yeah and to do all this with day jobs. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so yes. it doesn't necessarily come yeah. that easy. Yeah, you know, absolutely. this is a lot of hours that Terry and I put together these events every year to make sure that it's uh, impactful yeah. uh, because the uh, experience to us is everything. Right. You know, we represent the positive image and when when folks come and they attend this event or the, any events that we do throughout the year, we want to make sure that we represent it well and to have that level of consistency keeps people coming back. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, it, oh, I'm sorry. Terry no. and Tommy, um, thanks for taking time away from what I assume were your day jobs today yeah. to tell us about Positive Image um, and the incredible work that you're doing. If you want more information about Positive Image, you can check out positiveimage.net or find Positive Image on Facebook. This has been the SPNN Forum, and thanks for watching.